Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the CRKT Sketch. Um, first off, I want to thank very much my buddy Chris for uh, sending this little guy along. It's a very interesting piece. Probably wouldn't have checked it out otherwise, but I'm glad I did. So thank you very much for that, Chris. Next thing, let's do a size comparison. Here it is against Spydeco Delica. So you can see in terms of blade length, in terms of sharpened length, it's around the same department, even though in terms of legal length, it's a little bit uh, shorter, actually. And let's go ahead and measure that up real quick, because... Yeah, this is coming in right around 2.75 inches, although maybe if the cop hates you, they, they could get a little bit more out of it. But look, um, yeah, about 2.75 inches worth of blade there. Um, here it is against the Steel Wheel Cut Jack 3-inch, and so you can see, again, about the same amount of sharpened blade, even though there's a little bit more legal blade in the uh, Steel Wheel. And finally, here is the Ontario Rat Number 1, which makes this guy look pretty freaking small. So uh, there you go. Then finally, a quick note. This is by a this is a Burnley design by Lucas Burnley, who's a really well known designer. Um, it has made a bunch of different things for a bunch of different people, and so uh, yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this particular little pocket knife here. First off, to me at least, this is a nice size. Um, two point seven five inches is under the legal line in a pretty heavy majority of places here in the U.S., uh, which is good. Um, it does give you enough blade to get a lot of things done. Absolutely a hundred percent. I feel like three inches, even two point seven five is going to suffice for most people. Um, and so I, I like the size of this very much, and it becomes a relatively small knife to carry in the pocket here. I mean, size-wise, it's a little bit smaller to carry than the Spydeco Delica, which is nice. And because the backside of it is relatively smooth, it's easy to carry. I can't argue with that whatsoever. Next thing, the blade on this guy, this sheep's foot style blade here, is pretty useful. I like sheep's foot blades because it gives you ni nice opportunities to do a lot of cutting that are useful in your everyday life. The grind is good here, so it actually does cut things pretty well. It goes down to a relatively thin edge, uh, which is nice. And I mean, th this is just this is a reasonably nice blade here. I can't argue with that so much. Next. Thing. Although this looks like it is entirely a chunk of plastic, underneath the plastic are actually full metal liners, which means this is a pretty sturdy knife. There's not like any bending or anything like that. You can see a little bit here, but that's because the frame lock, I'm sorry, that's because the, uh, the, 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 the liner lock bar is off to the angle here. But on this side of it, for instance, you'll see there's just no meaningful bend, and so that, that's good there. Um, and this feels very solid in the hand. There's no complaint with that. Next thing, um, under, this plastic is actually composed of two things. You've got sort of a harder plastic here, and this is almost a rubberized sort of feeling, but it's very grippy. Um, this is absolutely staying in your hand 100%, and the combination of the little bit of contouring here, the texture up here, this is a grippy knife, and I think it wouldn't even be bad in the Vaseline factory. So uh, th that's a very nice little thing there. Next thing, as you can see here, it's got this little hole which allows access to the opening hole, but it also serves as a very effective lock bar access hole, which means it's very easy to open and close this knife. Um, well, certainly to close it, maybe a little less so to open it, although there's definitely a technique that you can get to. Um, but anyways, closing the knife is easy because you just press against the lock bar here and that, that, that makes it nice. Next thing, you can see here this is a pocket clip. Not only is it a nice pocket clip with a relatively deep carry on it, um, as well as plenty of room for the screws, uh, for the, the fabric that is on top of the screws, which is good. But it is also tip up, which is great. So many of these inexpensive knives, for some stupid reason, go tip down. Well, probably because they have unsafe detents. Um, but this is a tip up knife uh, with a perfectly safe detent. And uh, so th th that's always nice. Um, I prefer tip up by a mile. And so uh, it's good to see they didn't do that to it. Next thing, the ergonomics on this guy are pretty decent. It fits my relatively small hands pretty well. And you can even choke up a little bit if you'd like and go onto this flat surface with your finger here, which gives you a little bit more control over cutting. Look, this is a comfortable knife in the hand. A little bit of odd spot on the clip, but by and large, I'm pretty happy with it. So um, th 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 that's nice. And then next thing, the lanyard hole on this guy is pretty unobtrusive. You've just got kind of this little gap up here. It's probably not thick enough for a whole bunch of different kinds of cord, and it is plastic. So, you know, this is not what you want to repel off a bridge using, but you wouldn't do that anyways, I hope. And if you do, well, Darwin, I'm pretty okay with it. But anyways, look, um, the unobtrusive lanyard hole is nice. And then uh, finally, not quite finally, um, this is a pretty safe knife. Uh, what I mean by that is that there is nothing at all concerning about this. Um, the lockup is perfectly solid, no problem. The the line is, the, 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 everything is safely built. This is a knife that even though it's pretty inexpensive, I don't really feel like is what remotely dangerous to the user here. I mean, sure, you can hurt yourself with it if you use it stupidly, but unlike a lot of cheap knives, uh, which are actually just dangerous, um, this guy is, is pretty solid. And finally, speaking of solid, this has a very solid price point, coming in at 25 bucks. 
And 25 bucks is sort of the bargain basement of quality knife making. Um, there were very, very few good knives under 25 bucks. I should look into that more in the future there. But um, 25 bucks is a very solid price, and it's something that I think most people can afford to save up for a good quality tool. So um, anyways, there you go. That's the good, is that it's got a very nice price point at 25. It uh, seems very safe. Unobtrusive lanyard hole, decent ergonomics, nice tip-up clip, which is good. Great lock bar access, grippy inserts, full liners underneath here, a useful blade and useful blade shape and a nice size. What's great to me about this guy is actually the design of it. Um, I find this to be a very attractive design. It's based off of a Burnley Custom and uh, it's just, it's done well. It's got nice curvature to the top of it overall. I mean, you can see here you've got a nice little upward flow, downward flow. Then that's mirrored over here. It's got a nice sheep's foot blade. It's got nice contouring. I even like this red and black thing. It's doing a little bit of a Deadpool thing and that's in lately, but you know what? No freaking complaints about it. It is an absolutely solid little design and I, I, I got say I do appreciate it. And so uh, to me at least that's that's what's great here is that this is a very attractive design even though it is a very inexpensive knife. So let's move on to the bad. On the bad side, um, 8CR13MOV is the blade steel. It's not a great steel. You're going to be sharpening it a lot because it doesn't keep an edge that long. For the price, you know what, okay, whatever. But um, it's not a great steel, so don't go into this expecting super steel. But again, it's 25 bucks. Next thing, they didn't quite do the sharpening choil right on this guy. You can see there is a little bit of a sharpening choil, but the plunge grind goes out further, so you get a little bit of this smile up at the corner of the blade. It's not the end of the world, and it's something you can fix after market with a Dremel or something, but... You know what? It's it's not super stellar. Um, next thing, it is a little bit uh, small for uh, some people. I mean, three. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.75 inches is not going to be quite enough knife for every task. So keep that in mind. The stock is also a little bit thick for the size here. To give you a sense of the th uh, stock thickness here, this is thicker by a pretty decent margin than the uh, Spyderco Delica here, and that's not super great. I think this knife would be an even better slicer if they'd used a thinner stock on it. Um, not the end of the world. It it does cut reasonably well, but guys, come on, slim it down a little bit here. Next thing, this has a coated blade, um, and that's going to show wear more readily than a uh, than, than a machine blade machine finish. I don't even know what to call an uncoated blade. I guess you call it an uncoated blade. But anyways, um, it's going to take uh, scratches and wear a lot more than a uh, an uncoated blade will. So that's not great. Next thing, this does have some free spinning screws in the body, easy solder in the disassembly, which are just going to make things a little bit of a pain in the neck. Um, the one hand open on this guy is a little bit ergonomically weird. What you kind of have to do is really either kind of use your two fingers here and pinch the blade out in that way or really jam your thumb in there and yet you can get used to it and in fact as, as I carried it more I felt better with it but I still don't love that and especially relative to the you know hugely accessible holes that you get on something like a Spyderco um this just felt a little bit like weird to me you get past it though then finally on the the, the, the bad side the build quality on this knife is at that level which as I said in the disassembly well this better be cheap um you know for instance the washes on this guy one of the washes is what appears to be brass. The other one is Teflon uh, washes. Um, Teflon washes are, you know, okay at this price point, certainly, but it's not something I love seeing, and brass is a little weird in and of itself. Um, the, the, the quality overall, I mean, you have a fair amount of gaps and whatnot here, but 25 bucks, okay. It's cheap. I can live with that. The action on this guy is actually pretty unimpressive. It's a combination of both stick slippy and gritty. Um, I don't love the action. It's a very slow action. It's, it's, it's just unsatisfying as a knife guy. This might improve as the paint wears away a little bit more on the blade and whatnot, but the action isn't stellar. I mean, basically, like I said, the build quality means that this knife had better be cheap, but luckily it is. So that's not so bad. And to me, all of that is the bad, is that the build quality isn't super high, but it's 25 buck knife, so who cares? The one hand open isn't great ergonomically, but you get used to it. It's got a free spinning screws, uh, free spinning screws that is on the body here. The uh, coated blade will show a little more wear than usual. The stock is a little bit thick for a knife this size. It's going to be a little small for some folks. They didn't quite get the sharpening choil right. Needed to extend out further there. And 8CR13 MOV is just not a great steal. Um, on the ugly side, honestly, for 25 bucks, there's nothing particularly ugly here. Right? It's not a bad knife. And actually, that brings us to the final conclusion where I uh, say that this is not a bad knife at all. In fact, I would argue that this is how you should make an inexpensive knife. You get a good designer like Burnley to design a knife from the ground up to be inexpensive. He adapted a custom design and did it in such a way that it was meant to be cheap from the beginning. Um, and this allows you to make a knife that is made well 
at the low price point here. Rather than taking something which is a mid-range design and then making it cheaply, you make something that is a cheap design and you do it right. And the end result is a knife that is, well, absolutely not high-end. This is not going to be replacing a high-end art knife piece in your life or anything like that, but it does what it sets out to do and it does it pretty well. It's solid, it's quality, it's reliable. And that's what they've done here. An inexpensive knife that is well-designed to be inexpensive. Yeah, the steel isn't great, so you're gonna spend more time sharpening. Yeah, the action, it's not super great either. Yeah, it's not gonna replace anything high-end. And if you spend 10 bucks more, you can get into some much nicer knives, absolutely 100%. But for 25 bucks, this is pretty damn good. It is absolutely safe, it is functional. It will put in good work. It doesn't feel like they've cut a ton of corners on this. And honestly, I think it would make a pretty decent first knife, travel knife, truck knife, or just a knife that you're not really that afraid to lose. Most people can afford to lose 25 bucks. You know, they wouldn't want to, but you know, it's not a, a, a huge, huge freaking tragedy if something happens to this guy. And so I think that's a really great price point for this kind of thing to be at here. And frankly, it's a great gift knife because this is an inexpensive knife that I would feel absolutely fine in handing to somebody I cared about. Um, I know that this knife will not hurt them. It may not please them in the, in the grand scheme of, you know, high-end knives, but they're going to be just fine with it. So I actually like this. I think this is a really solid piece. It's not quite a gem given the action, but it's almost not that far off given the price. And it is an easy knife to recommend at this price point, and it's absolutely a great effort from Cricket and Lucas Burnley. So well done, and I hope that we see a lot more of this kind of knife out of Cricket, which are not knives that are, you know, high-end knives that are built cheaply, but knives that are super well designed to be inexpensive, because when they do this, they come up with some pretty compelling stuff, and they get uh, do a good thing by making decent knives available at pretty competitive prices. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting, that this review wasn't too sketchy, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of the day and that you can draw a lot of conclusions on the basis of this review. Uh, two for one. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye now.